Before we get into how to make beer, you'll first need to know what you need to make it. After all, you can't make beer without the proper equipment. You'll need a stovetop or propane burner, a large stainless steel pot with a capacity of at least 5 gallons, ice, 20 pounds is recommended, good quality drinking water, about 6 gallons worth, a mild unscented dish detergent, sanitizer, no rinse sanitizers are recommended for ease of use. In order to be labeled as such, it has to be approved by the FDA for sanitation purposes, so it does make a difference. Make sure it's actually sanitizer. A good example is 5 Star Star San. A thermometer that's suitable for use with foods and liquids, a large spoon that can withstand high levels of heat, a mesh straining bag. Make sure that the bag has a fine mesh construction to reduce the amount of grain that escapes. An auto siphon and tubing. A fermenting bucket with lid. Make sure that the lid has a hole to allow the release of CO2 gas that will be produced during fermentation. A hydrometer. An airlock. Ingredients. In addition to good drinking water, you'll need malt extract, hops, and yeast. For your convenience, we offer a wide variety of, of ingredient kits that come with everything you need to take the hassle out of putting an ingredient kit together yourself. And if you plan on kegging your brew, in addition to your kegerator, you'll need a homebrew keg with ball lock posts and ball lock adapters for your kegerator. So now that you know about extract brewing and the equipment that you need to get it done, let's get to it. Cleaning and sanitation. First thing you should note, or rather burn into your mind, is that proper cleaning and sanitation is extremely important in all processes of beer making. Anything that will come in contact with anything that will eventually make the beer should be thoroughly cleaned using a mild unscented dish detergent. Then you'll want to sanitize all of those very same surfaces with the sanitizer dissolved into water, per usage instructions to create your sanitizing solution. Performing proper cleaning and sanitation will help prevent infection of your beer. To make things easiest, make a batch of sanitizing solution in a large container that you can use throughout the brew process. Other steps before the brew. Prior to beginning the brew, you should place the malt extract in a bath of warm water to allow it to become more viscous. It is a very thick syrup-like liquid and if it's too cold, it won't pour very well. You should also ensure that your yeast is at room temperature. The brew. This is the step in the home brewing process where you'll make the wort. Wort is the liquid mixture that contains the sugars that will eventually be consumed by the yeast to make beer. First, clean and sanitize your stainless steel pot and add 2 to 3 gallons of water depending on the recipe. If you are brewing using only malt extract without any grain, bring the water to a boil and then promptly remove it from the heat source. Next, you will want to add the malt extract. You can skip the next step and move on to the point in which you add it. First, bring the water to 155 degrees Fahrenheit. Once you have hit temperature, line the inside of the brew pot with a mesh bag. Then carefully pour the grain into the mesh bag while making sure that the bag does not fall into the pot. After all the grain is in the bag, tie it shut. Make sure the knot is tight enough that it won't come undone, but loose enough so you can undo it later. With the grain in the bag, gently lift it up and down in and out of the water, similar to how you would make tea. Once the grain has become fully soaked with water, let it set in the water to steep. Periodically use a spoon to gently stir the contents to ensure that all of the grain is immersed. If only using extract and specialty grains, allow the grain to steep for 25 minutes while maintaining 155 degrees Fahrenheit. When time is up, turn off the heat and remove the pot from the burner. Then lift the grain bag out and hold it over the pot to allow as much liquid to drip out of the grain as possible. Once you've gotten as much as you can, Discard the grain. Adding the malt extract. With the pot away from the heat source, stir the contents vigorously. While stirring continuously, slowly pour the malt extract into the pot. Do your best to avoid splashing and to prevent the extract from sticking to the bottom and sides of the pot. The extract has a very high sugar content and can burn easily if it is not suspended within the mixture, so it is critical that you stir constantly while adding the extract. Once you have gotten all of the extract out of the container that you can possibly get, return the pot to the burner and bring the mixture to a boil while stirring occasionally. Do not leave the pot unattended. The mixture known as wort contains a lot of sugar and can easily boil over. If it boils over, you can imagine the sugary mess you're going to have on your hand. To prevent boil over, keep a watchful eye on the pot and stir the wort regularly. Once the wort has reached a boil without boiling over, adjust the heat as needed to maintain a rolling boil. 
the boil. Now that you have a nice rolling boil going, it's time to add the hops. Hops can be added at different increments during the boil for different effects, including bittering, adding flavor, and adding aroma. While not every recipe uses hops for flavoring and aroma, all will require the addition of bittering hops to balance out the sweetness of all the sugars in the wort. Bittering hops will be added at the beginning of the boil, which will last for 60 minutes. Once you have achieved a rolling boil, add the bittering hops and set a timer for 60 minutes. Be careful when adding the hops as they can instantly create foam that will boil over. Adjust the heat and stir to prevent the wort from boiling over. If the recipe calls for flavoring hops, add them to the boil after 45 minutes have elapsed. If there are aroma hops, add them after 55 minutes have elapsed. Once the entire boil time has elapsed, remove the pot from the heat source and prepare to cool the wort. Cool down. Now that the boil is complete, it is critical that you quickly reduce the temperature of the wort to room temperature to avoid infection and ensure that the beer has a high level of clarity. You should aim to get the temperature down within 20 minutes. Keep in mind that the size of your batch and ambient temperature will have an effect on how quickly and easily you can cool the wort. Ice bath. An ice bath is the simplest method for cooling wort. All it requires is a sink and lots of ice. Create an ice bath in your kitchen sink by filling it with cold water, about one third of the way up. Then add ice. Do not fill the sink completely as you'll need extra space when the water level rises when you place the pot into the bath. Carefully place the pot into the bath and begin stirring the wort continuously. Doing so will allow more of the wort to come in contact with the cold bath. Be careful to avoid splashing and do not allow any outside water to come in contact with the wort. The ice will inevitably melt and the overall temperature of the bath will rise. To maintain a cold bath, drain some of the water from the sink and add ice as needed. Remember to stir constantly and monitor temperature. Once you have reached room temperature, remove the pot from the ice bath and place it on a towel and dry the outside of the pot. This will prevent any water from dripping into your wort when you transfer it to the primary fermenter. Transferring to the primary fermenter. Now that you've properly cooled the wort, it's time to transfer it to a storage vessel for primary fermentation. This vessel should be large enough to hold the wort and, if necessary, sterile top-up water that you add. Top-up water is just water that you may need to add to reach the full batch size. A fermentation bucket such as this one is a great choice since it has volume graduations on the side for easy reference as well as a lid that provides an airtight seal. The lid is also drilled and grommeted to allow for easy placement of an airlock. Now, don't get used to it, but this is the one point in the beer making process where splashing of the liquid is okay. Splashing helps aerate the wort, introducing oxygen to the mixture, which is necessary for the yeast during the fermentation process. Pour the cooled wort into the sanitized fermenter, being careful not to spill any of the wort. If necessary, add top-up water to reach the full batch volume. Make sure that the water is of good quality, just as the water that you brewed with. A helpful hint is to pour the top of water into the brew pot, then into the primary fermenter. This will help get all of the goodies that may be left in the pot. Taking the original gravity reading. Once you have reached the proper volume, it is time to take your first gravity reading. The reading will provide you with the wort specific gravity, which is its density in relation to the density of water. In the end, checking the gravity of your wort will help you ensure that you had a successful fermentation and will also allow you to calculate your beer's alcohol content known as alcohol by volume, or ABV. This first gravity reading, known as the original gravity, or OG, can be taken using a hydrometer. A hydrometer is a tool that is used to measure specific gravity. In order to take a reading, you must first retrieve a sample of your wort and place it in a container. A hydrometer test jar or cylindrical container that is similar in size will work best. Most hydrometers come packaged in a tube that will work as well. To retrieve the sample, a beer thief works best, but you can also use a turkey baster. No matter what tool you choose to use, make sure that it is properly sanitized first. Once you have retrieved the wort sample and placed it in the container, place the hydrometer into the container and make sure that it is fully suspended within the liquid. You do not want the hydrometer sitting on the bottom of the container. Allow all bubbles to rise out of the liquid and then give the hydrometer a spin to free it of anything that may be affecting its suspension. Look at the line on the hydrometer where the liquid matches up. You want to read from the low flat point of the liquid airline, not the liquid airlines where surface tension pulls the liquid up the sides of the container. If you are using a triple scale hydrometer such as this one, 
you'll want to read from the specific gravity scale. Once you have properly read the liquid airline, record this original gravity reading somewhere that you will be able to reference it after fermentation is complete. Activating and pitching the yeast. With the initial gravity reading recorded, it's time to add the yeast. In the brewing world, this step is known as pitching. As noted earlier, you'll want to ensure that your yeast is at room temperature prior to pitching. Doing so will make for a more active yeast population, healthier fermentation, and ultimately, a better beer. Brewing yeast is not the same as baker's yeast and can come in dry or liquid form. Many extract ingredient kits will come with dry yeast as it is easier to store and will not require any additional steps to activate it. Once your yeast is at room temperature, simply sprinkle it evenly into the wort. Then stir the wort to mix the yeast in thoroughly. In addition to mixing in the yeast, stirring will also assist in aeration of the wort, adding oxygen that is necessary for yeast growth. As an alternative method to stirring, you can also place the lid on the fermenter, sanitize your thumb, cover the hole in the lid with your thumb, and shake the fermenter. With the mixture aerated, sanitize an airlock and prepare it for use. When using a three-piece airlock such as this one, you'll want to fill the body one-third of the way up without pouring water into the stem. Then place the cradle over the top of the stem and secure the lid on top. Then place the airlock into the hole of the lid. CO2 gas is a byproduct of the fermentation process and will need to be released. The airlock allows it to escape without allowing any outside air or contaminants inside the fermenter.